Please, Sharon, to call in right now. Sharon, call in the show right now. Because the reads are there, the notes are there. Where is Sharon at? Sito. Like Nene, but then they can't be in church, but then they can't do this. What the fuck? First, when you had the choir director sitting with the sleeping with the piano player and she got pregnant, all types of shit. I'm sorry, but is she the one that stole the wig, Jason? I'ma light your ass up for that one. I'm gonna need an ancestry.com because I don't see a bit of fucking Puerto Rican. You're gonna have to get over that. We got over that shower curtain in the background. You're gonna have to get over bitches going left and right. I'm talking about it, you know why? Because that's the only good pussy he'll ever have in his fucking mouth. I'm glad. And instead of running your mouth, run on a fucking treadmill, bitch. How about that? I love when Sharon shows up because Sharon be having the motherfucking notes. She's going to go through them. Go ahead, Sharon. Welcome back, everybody. You guys know who the fuck I am. I'm Queen Sharon, Queen of the Mess Report, where I cover the mess so you don't have to stress. And welcome to another episode of Hot Off the Press. I missed y'all. I missed y'all. I took close to maybe two weeks off, maybe a week and a half, but everybody needs a break sometimes. I had to take some time, take some me time. So, you know, just a reminder out to you guys, no matter if you're doing what you love, what you love, no matter if you have a job, make sure that you always give yourself me time and take breaks when you need to. I needed a break. I took a break. Now I am back. So I got a couple extra topics in there just because I missed you guys and I want to cover some stuff, okay? Now, before we get started, let me go ahead and put this up on the screen. This is the disclaimer right here. <clears throat> now, this disclaimer, you guys should be used to this by now, okay? Screenshot it if you don't know what it says, but this is letting you know that this is for entertainment purposes only. And if you don't want your children to hear anything about pussies being pink or booty holes being brown, then it is your responsibility to put your kids up. I am responsible for my kids. You are responsible for your kids. And again, this is for entertainment purposes only. Screenshot it. Look at it on your own time. I have done my job. Now, Let's go ahead and get started. Now, I want to go ahead and I want to cover something. This is not on the mess report. This is in a category on its own because it's that big and it's that important. Jason motherfucking Lee, everybody. birthday was this past week, August 16th. The king of the internet was born, okay? And his birthday party was this past Saturday that just passed. Now, it was at the Eden Sunset. Um, let's go ahead and put the first picture up on the screen, babe. This is Jason's invitation right here. You know, Jason always does it big. Um, I was lucky enough to be able to go to his uh, birthday party that he threw two years ago. It was amazing. I know how he gets down. I was not able to make it to this one, um, unfortunately, but I already know how it went down. Now, of course, you know, some of his besties were there, Cardi B, Floyd Mayweather. Of course, it was packed. There was other people there, plenty of people there. Jason looked amazing. Let's go ahead and put the next uh, picture up on the screen. All right, this is Jason right here outside of his party. Uh, you see he had the, it, he called it the Jason Lee experience. If you guys have been following him, you guys know that everything, the Jason Lee show, the podcast, um, uh, him on Amp Radio, everything is the Jason Lee experience right now. And he most definitely is giving us an experience to remember. Let's go ahead and put the next picture up on the screen. Here's Jason again, looking good, by the way. Jason never disappoints. I'm telling you right now, I don't know who his stylist is or if he's picking out his own clothes, but whoever is doing it, if he's doing it, keep doing it. Let's go ahead and get the next picture, baby. 
Another picture, I, oh, I, I love this picture. This is one of my favorites. The side view, the sunglasses, the hair was slayed. I, Jason just looked amazing. Um, what's the next picture that we have? Okay, now, of course, you guys, this is the uh, the cocktail menu that was at Jason's uh, birthday party. But can you put that back up on the screen? Because let me read this to them, what they had. So he had uh, special drinks, okay? He had unapologetic. That was tequila, grapefruit, juice, uh, lime, and salt on the rim. Then he had slut me out. Okay, shout out to NLE Chapa. Tequila, orange juice, soda, wa soda water, and uh, grenadine. Then he had pussy pink. Shout out to sexy red. Vodka, coconut, rum, uh, peach schnapps, pineapple, and a splash of cranberry. He had booty hole brown, which was vodka, rum, gin, tequila. Ooh, triple sec. Oh, shit. Orange liqueur, liqueur, sweet and sour, uh, cola, lemon, and a lemon garnish. Then he had the mandingo, okay? Whiskey. Um, ooh, what is that? Anagostera bitters. Oh, Lord. And uh, simple syrup and cherry garnish. Now, if it was me, I think I would go for the pussy pink or the booty hole brown. And I'm not even saying it because they go together. But those booty hole brown look like it sounds like it gets you tore the fuck up. Did y'all see all that liquor that was in those drinks? Now, leave it to Jason, of course, to sit there and come out with something as amazing as this. Um, I think that, uh, you know, if you guys can get a chance, go over there. Like I said, we're celebrating them all month. Wish him a happy birthday. I just want to congratulate you, Jason, for everything that you're doing. I'm super, super, super proud of you. I've told you this so many times before. You guys, for some reason, I get dumbstruck uh, when I try to express how much I love Jason and how awesome of a person he is. So I can't say anything except for he is just motherfucking awesome. OK, uh, love that guy. Love that guy to death. Happy birthday, Jason. You deserve every single thing that you're getting. Um, and I know the motherfucking party was dope. Now, I think we got some more pictures. What what else do we have? Oh, yeah. Now, y'all look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Jason is fine. It's fine. Now, I think if I remember that he was either 16 or he was 19 in that picture. I think it may have been 19. But anyway, this is the younger Jason. But. The older Jason still looks amazing, still looks debonair, um, handsome, gorgeous eyes. But that was him when he was younger. What else do we have, babe? Do we have anything? Uh, oh, couldn't I forget? Now, this is me uh, and Jason and uh, me giving Jason a hug. This was at the uh, recent Hollywood um, Unlocked Impact Awards that we went to. Um, yeah, and that's me and Jason right there. I love that guy. And he smells so good so good even the first time i met jason and it was just casual and we were having a little bit of lunch still smelled good i meant to put that picture up too when i first met jason but anyway uh congratulations on celebrating another year of life jason i'm so proud of you gag nation supports you um and keep doing your motherfucking thing now speaking on the topic of that i want to get into um jason real quick jason and t.s madison now jason lee um did an interview on the Jason Lee show with T.S. Madison. You guys got to cut me some slack. You know what I'm saying? I'm a little rusty. But with T.S. Madison. And I wanted to, there, it's not a topic, but I wanted to give um, T.S. Madison a shout out. One, Jason, you did an amazing job on that interview. That was one of the best interviews I've ever seen. I truly, truly enjoyed it. Um, I felt like <clears throat> some things were really clarified and it was some conversations that needed to be had. Um, also some shade that needed to be thrown. Um, and then some of it wasn't even shade. It was pow, pow, right in the face. She gave it to him. Let's go ahead and put that up on the big screen. This is T.S. Madison right here, you guys. T.S. Madison is a transgender woman. <clears throat> and she was just recently, let me take a sip of my drink. She was just recently on the Jason Lee show. Now, you guys know that the big thing was going on between T.S. Madison and Jess Hilarious and of the TikToker that made the comment uh, saying that women don't own periods. You guys know all of that. Well, T.S. Madison goes into detail. I think she was very fair. Um, and she ended off by stating that she would not call biological women cis women anymore. And I'm sorry, I got to give her hand claps for that. <laughs> because I think that T.S. Madison was able to have a very intelligent conversation. And she also was able to look at stuff from both sides um, of the spectrum, whether it was coming from a transgender um, point of view or whether it was coming from a bio biological woman um, point of view. I think 
I, I think that she she's a real one. She's a real one. T.S. Madison, she's a real one. She's dope as fuck. Um, and I respect the fact, I respect her so much. I so so much more of her just simply saying, I will not say cisgender anymore. Okay, because it's offensive to a lot of biological women. And even though some people may not understand it and may not get it, I think that it showed so much maturity and it took us in the right direction of T.S. Madison being able to say, you know what, if they don't like this, I'm going to respect it and I'm not going to use it. Just like we have terms that we want them to respect that they're that they shouldn't use. T.S. Madison, I got to I. I. Say, T.S. Madison, you 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 handled yourself so well. And let me tell you something. I'm with you 100. That motherfucking dope head, goddamn uh uh little Boosie Junior looking motherfucker, Tasha K. Boy, you let her have it. And I thought that it was amazing. Very entertaining um interview. Good job, Jason. Good job, T.S. Madison. Uh, we love you guys. Now, with that being said, let's go ahead and get into the first segment. It's time for the messy report. <laughs> All right, first topic on the docket, you guys, is this big teeth motherfucker right here. Let's go ahead and put them up on the screen. Yep, your eyes do not deceive you. Do, those are not uh, fake teeth that he bought at Party City um, getting ready for Halloween. Those are his teeth. Now, for those of you that don't know, this is King T.I. son. T.I. is a uh, Southern down South uh, rapper, okay? Um Let's get into it. Now, social media is going in on rapper T.I. son King after getting his teeth done by getting veneers. People are clowning him and saying that his teeth are way too big. And his father, T.I. Joke, jokingly joked about his teeth being big and even said his mother's first reaction, singer Tiny from the group Escape, was, why are they so damn big? All in all, his family stands with him and supports him in his teeth journey. Now, we just going to call a spade a spade. King, they big as hell. They big as hell. It looked like you got a mouthful of motherfucking chicklets in your goddamn mouth. Now, I will say this, okay? You're still handsome, okay? You're still a handsome guy. But maybe you could have got him to take it down motherfucking two sizes, maybe smaller, okay? I was listening to when T.I. was joking about it and his co-host said that they look like Garfield teeth. They do. They look like when the Simpsons smile. They all just together. I don't even know how you're able to form a motherfucking sentence. But King took to the internet, you guys, and told everybody, y'all stop tripping and worrying about his teeth. He don't want your girls. He ain't going to take your girls. Your girls are safe. King, I don't think you got to worry about girls with motherfucking teeth like that, nigga, because I see you with that. And trust me, that's a hazard sign. You can see the motherfucking teeth from goddamn two, three, four, five, six miles a motherfucking way. Okay? They bright as motherfucking hazard lights. I'm going to sit there and go the other direction. Okay. Nevertheless, I'm glad that your family is supporting you. T.I. is supporting him. We haven't heard about uh, from Tiny except for why are they so damn big. His sister is supporting him. Even his little sister, the youngest one, says, stop talking about my brother. So, hey, all in all, as it floats your boat and it looks like the motherfucker, if you were to be in the ocean, the motherfuckers would float like a boat. Okay. Um, I, If that's what you like, I love it. Okay. Congratulations to you on your new teeth. And yes, we support you and back you up with your teeth journey. But I will tell you, nigga, they big as hell. They big as hell. Veneers, everybody got veneers. You know what I'm saying? But in Hollywood, but them motherfuckers is big as hell. Now, you guys, we're going to be moving to these through these topics. You know how Queen do. We're going to move through these topics pretty motherfucking fast. Because, you know, I got quite a few topics I got to get through because I wanted to put some, uh, a good bit extra in there for you guys since I've been gone for like a week and a half. So let's go ahead and get to the next topic on the docket. Sierra Gates, everybody. Let's go ahead and put her up on the screen, babe. Y'all, this is Sierra Gates. She is um, a, a cast member on the show Love & Hip Hop. Okay, Love & Hip Hop Atlanta. So let's go ahead and get into it. Sierra Gates took to her Instagram um, the other morning to further discuss Safari reportedly shooting his shot and telling her he wanted to be in a relationship with her. Now, those of you guys that don't know Safari, he's also on Love & Hip Hop. He is a cast member of Love & Hip Hop. He is the ex-boyfriend of Nicki Minaj, and he was also married to Erica Mena and is the ex-husband of Erica Mena. Now, let's continue to get into it. She explains that when it happened, she told her now ex, her now ex, Eric Whitehead, and Bambi about the incident. Now, Bambi, you guys, is also on Love & Hip Hop. Bambi is the ex of Lil Scrappy, the ex-wife of Lil Scrappy. They just went through a divorce. Okay, so just catching you guys up in case you don't know. 
Um, she explained because she valued her friendship with Erica Mena. She didn't tell her right away because she saw how her divorce broke her down. Sierra continues to explain that Erica knew they, and they agreed they would not discuss the matter on Love & Hip Hop Atlanta. However, she was caught off guard when Erica brought it up during film, filming. Nonetheless, she shared, shared that following the incident, she is no longer friends with Erica or Bambi. Okay? Now, you might be wondering, why is it that Sierra is upset uh, with it coming up on the show? Because you are on a reality show, right? After all. So it's supposed to um, air your life and air reality. Well, because she agreed, and she agreed with uh, Erica and Bambi that they would not bring it up on the show. She, like it said, she was caught off guard. But really what has upset uh, Sierra, and allegedly, and has made it to where they are not friends no more, is that when the internet went in, social media went in on Sierra and telling her that she was trying to get Safari, she was trying to get with him behind Erica's back. And Erica and Bambi did not stand up for her or set the record straight at all. Therefore, she is done with them. Now, I will have to say, you guys, you guys got to stop being on these motherfucking reality shows if you don't want your motherfucking life shown. It's supposed to be a reality show. I'm getting really tired of the storylines. That's the only thing that you guys want to be seen. If you're going to be on that show and you're showing your life, your life is going to be shown. Now, however, I do think that it was wrong because if it was agreed between three best friends, okay, that we're not going to discuss this on the show because you know the route that it was going to take, then it should not have been brought up on the show. And thus, this proves my point of what I have said about Erica Mena all along. When Erica Mena was trying to get in Scrappy's face and defend Bambi and was saying, that's my girl, that's my girl, I didn't know that Erica Mena was that close to Bambi. You could have fucking fooled me. But what I said, and you can go back to the, to the previous episodes, I said that I believe that Erica is just trying to stay relevant by being in the latest drama, that she really doesn't care about Bambi in that way. But hey, she gets more screen time on the show if she's in Scrappy's face and her name continues to stay in people's mouth. I don't think that she was really concerned about it. I think she should have been focused on her own relationship and what she had going on. Um, so her bringing this up uh, when they agreed not to talk about it does not motherfucking surprise me. Doesn't surprise me at all because Erica wants that screen time. Erica wants that shock value. Erica wants her name to stay, her name to stay in people's mouth. I, I, absolutely uh, wrong, inappropriate, in my opinion. If you agreed, okay. First off, you shouldn't even be on a reality show if you don't want your your, your life to be shown. But if you guys agreed and made a pact that you would not bring it up on the show, that is fucking wrong, Erica. And then when social media went in, if that was my friend, that was my bestie, I would be like, hey, you guys, we talked about this. You guys are just now seeing this on the show, but we have already talked about this. And chill out. My my friend was not trying to get with my man. That's the my my, my or my ex man. That is a motherfucking dog that a dog of my ex to do some shit like this. You guys need to steer away. And even though I don't think it would have stopped the comments, they still would have said stuff about Sierra, but it would have felt good for her to have that support from friends. Now, Sierra also didn't tell Erica Mena that Bambi knew about this all along. The first two people she told was Bambi and she told her ex, Eric. Okay? Now, when it all came out and Erica Mena found out about it, she never told her Bambi knew because she didn't want Erica to be upset at Bambi for knowing all along and not saying anything to her. Now, all of this is just a hot ass mess. The social media is really tearing Sierra the fuck up. And I just think that Erica, you motherfucking wrong as hell. You're wrong as hell. You could have sat there and stuck up, defended your friend and said something, okay? Instead of you just standing around and all we seen is your big ass jumpers everywhere as well. Then Bambi, this hooved bitch, okay? You sitting there and you're in somebody else's business and you didn't even sit there and defend Sierra and that's so fucked up. But you need to sit there and be worried about your own uh, your own business as well and what's going on with Scrappy. And really, you know what I'm saying? Uh, I would say, you guys, this happened months ago, so it's not even going on right now. But I've seen Instagram posts of Bambi still talking about it and still talking about issues and things like that. So Bambi, I, I think that it was really fucked up. OK, it coming out to the Internet. It came out to everybody recently. You guys should have stuck up for your fucking friend. Friend, you guys are horrible friends, horrible friends. And it just shows that money uh, is the root of all evil because you guys would trade on your motherfucking friend and not value and stick to something that you guys agreed to together all to get motherfucking screen time, screen time and to get your name in people's mouths.
Okay, completely unacceptable. So wrong. I feel so bad for Sierra. But hey, again, to you, Sierra, you don't want your business or a chance of your business being out there. Bitch, don't go on reality motherfucking TV. But I love your cooking pics. All right. Now, let's go ahead and get into the next topic on the uh, docket, you guys, right here. Rapper Gunplay. Let's go ahead and put them up on the screen, babe. Now, rapper Gunplay was arrested in Miami. He's accused of pointing a rifle at his wife while she was holding their six-month-old baby. Law enforcement sources uh, say this allegedly happened after his wife told him to quiet down while playing Xbox. Gunplay denies it all. Now, those of you guys that have been following Gunplay, Gunplay was also on Love & Hip Hop Miami. That's when I first saw and knew who he was, okay? He's also a Florida rapper. Um, Gunplay, you guys, he's uh, struggled with drugs. He allegedly, he's been open about that, but I'm still going to put allegedly on there because I'm not going to sit there and get uh, fucked up. Now, Gunplay has, uh, you know, had his downfalls with um, drugs, uh, and he got clean, and uh, supposedly got clean, allegedly got clean, and everything was great, everything was good. Um, but now his wife is saying that she's um, filing for divorce because he's relapsed and back on drugs, and 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 held a a gun out to her. Now, I really got to say, you guys, this is something that is very serious. This is very serious, and this is some of the side effects of what drugs can do and how it can literally fuck up your life and ruin your life. Now, I know in Hollywood, everybody, you know, mostly everybody do a little bump, bump now, okay? But when you, you get heavy, now, not me, I don't do no bump, bump. I don't, I, I, I don't, no, I don't, I don't be on the ski slopes, nothing like that. But I mean, I think that this is really sad, and especially with them having, her having the baby in her arms, that anything could have happened. Um, I've seen Gunplay when he is intoxicated, and it seems like um, a demon is possessed him okay he acts really really crazy um all i can say is that gunplay i really hope that you get the help that you need but to his wife i i would follow through because if he's doing something and not thinking as far as holding a gun out on you and the baby you could have lost your child you could have lost your life and i say run bitch run because you do not want to be caught up in this situation god has spared you you still have your life Get out of this while you can. I understand you may want to support him, but sometimes the best way we can support people is to let them go and somebody else along the journey will have to be the ones to help them when we can. Pray for him, wish him the best, but bitch, run, okay? Now, we wish uh, the best wishes to gunplay. I hope that you get clean. Um, get your shit together. Not cool, not cool at all. And I and I know drugs take over people, but here's the thing. If you know drugs are going to make you act a certain way and do stuff, don't do it. Completely unacceptable. You held a GUN uh, to your baby and it was th that it, horrible, horrible. All because, nigga, you got told to shut the fuck up because you was playing the Xbox. Bitch, you shouldn't have been playing the Xbox in the first place. Your ass should have been out there rapping and getting some type of gigs and helping get money. Okay, because you the same motherfucker that was doing GoFundMe's and doing all that shit. And now you're sitting there and getting mad at your wife and your baby because you being told to shut up because you playing Xbox. Bitch, get out there and start motherfucking rapping and make some goddamn money for your goddamn uh family instead of being a big ass kid and getting uh intoxicated and then sitting down playing a game and getting pissed when somebody tells you to be quiet. Bitch, you got a motherfucking baby. Baby sleep at night. Shut your mouth. Shut the fuck up. I hope that you get help and God bless you. All right, let's go to the next topic on the docket. Michael or everybody, let's put him up on the screen, babe. This big motherfucker right here, okay? Michael Orr, the inspiration behind the Blind Side movie, claims he was never adopted and tricked into a conserv conservatorship. He's speaking out now and saying he will let the lawsuit speak for itself. People have since started blaming Sandra Bullock, the actress that received the Oscar for her role in the movie Blindside, and they feel she should give the Oscar back, saying that the storyline was a fake one. Y'all motherfuckers will do anything. First, let me say this. We should have known something was up when it was a motherfucking white goddamn family rescuing a black, big-ass black boy, okay? We should have realized that it was something was up with that. Michael Orr, I sit there and say, motherfucking go for it. They owe you your money. They tricked you into a conservatorship. You got damn Britney Spears Jr. They took your money, took your money, took your money. Now you're 30 something years old and you want your motherfucking money back. And y'all white folks are sitting there and 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 benefiting from all the goddamn money that, that was given. And if that is the case and you actually got all these millions of dollars based off of him and he didn't get anything, well, goddamn it, I hope that life, uh, that uh, lawsuit speaks for itself. And I hope what it says is your motherfucking guilty. Pay that nigga back his money. Okay. It's and we already need to get paid back for black folks and everything that we done been through and you white folks done put us through. Okay. 
this could be the start. This could be the start. You 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 could start it right here, Michael Or So good for you for sitting there and going and getting your trying to get your money back. Okay. I think that that is just completely wrong. It's ridiculous. It's horrible. You guys really benefited off this boy. And even though they are saying that they uh, did not trick him into a conservatorship, that was the only way that they could do it for some reason. Here's the thing. Y'all still went along with the story. And Michael Orr, your dumb ass still went along with the story too. See, you thought you was going to get money. It was okay to lie when you thought you that money was going to be coming to your pockets. But as soon as, as, as that money, well, not as soon, but that money went to the white folks and now you have a problem with it. You shouldn't have been willing to sit there and lie just to sit there and uh, and to get money and to collect money. Now, you guys know I discriminate equally. If you a dumbass white person, I'm going to say it. And if you a dumbass black person, I'm going to say it. Both of the motherfuckers is dumb in this point, uh, in, in, in this situation. And y'all shouldn't have fucking lied. I, I knew it. when I And I love Blindside. And I watched that movie and I said, could this be real? Really? And here we are years later, and it's not. It's not real. You guys, give it up for Queen, okay? Um, got the new hairstyle last time you guys saw me. It was black, straight black, 26 inches. Um, I went with the fire theme this time, fire theme, ombre fire theme, okay? You know, bringing it back to the fire, but I just had to get into the, the look really quickly. Hmm. Got to put my earrings on, too. All right, you guys, so... You heard the second part of what I said. Sandra Bullock, okay, won an Oscar for playing in this movie, uh, uh, The Blind Side, that was based on this true story. Now, they're saying that Sandra Bullock needs to give her Oscar back because the 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 story was fake. Are y'all fucking kidding me? Half of these movies, most of these movies that we watch, is fake. It is for entertainment. She got the Oscar, not based on the story, but how she acted and how she betray, uh, uh, portrayed the lady in the story, and she did a good fucking job. Sandra Bullock is one of my favorite actresses, you guys. Uh, gorgeous, beautiful, talented. She deserves that Oscar. She earned that Oscar. That story being fake don't got shit to do with her. Y'all motherfuckers will make up anything and sit there and complain and bitch about anything. But y'all can't get in front of the camera and act. Y'all couldn't get a motherfucking goddamn Oscar to save your life. Y'all couldn't get a, 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 a Raz trophy to motherfucking save your life. Leave Sandra alone. Sandra ain't did shit to nobody. Okay? Leave Sandra alone. She deserves that Oscar. I think that she should keep it. And I think y'all should keep her motherfucking name out y'all's mouth. Now, let's go to the next topic on the docket. DJ Academics. You guys, for those of you guys that do not know him, this is a social media influencer. Okay? DJ Academics, everybody. Mm, mm. DJ Af Academics goes off on Eric Badu saying, bitch, Fuck you. How many rappers have you ran through? Academics is still mad from when Eric Badu said he looked like Jerry from Tom and Jerry. Can we put that picture up on the screen, babe? There you go. Can we put DJ Academics back up on there? Okay. And Jerry? Academics? Jerry? Academics? Me? Bitch, you look like Jerry. Bitch, you look like Jerry. I just I just went back and forth between both frames over and over again. Bitch, you look like Jerry. Now, how are you going to get mad? They was having a smoke session, you guys. Let's put Erica Badu up on the screen for your, those of you guys that, that don't know who this gorgeous queen is, okay? Used to be married to Andre 3000. They have a child together. Love, Erica Badu. Bet you for me, Erica Badu. Erica Badu, everybody. Uh. DJ Academics, you guys were sitting, you were you were talking to her, you were interviewing, uh, she was smoking a blunt. And, you know, sometimes when you smoke, things become much, much more clear, okay? Um, and it is clear to see that you look like Jerry. Get the fuck over it. I get so tired of you niggas being so motherfucking sensitive. As soon as a bitch say something to you, you want to get in your feelings. Oh, bitch, fuck you. How many niggas you don't ran through? I ain't heard about Erica Badu like that. But I have heard about you and your nasty dick because you fucked Selena Powell. Oh, boom. Allegedly. Allegedly. So when you sitting there and you talking about Erica Badu and how many motherfuckers done ran through her, bitch, you done ran through every goddamn man in motherfucking Hollywood. Bitch, you it goddamn you you don't you don't fuck Trey Songs, allegedly. If we looking at it, because if you fuck Selena Powell, how many motherfuckers does Selena done fuck? Bitch, you can't talk about who the fuck is sleeping with who. 
Selena done got pissed on and slutted out and played with Snoop Dogg's nipples, allegedly. You can't say shit. And at this point in time, you should just be happy anybody wants your goddamn Jerry looking ass. Hell yeah. You look she hit that nail on the head. Nigga, get the fuck over it. And don't go off on the queen of motherfucking again. When you sit there and you 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 looking like Jerry and you fuck Selena Powell, bitch, you can't say nothing to nobody. Nobody. Time for the next segment, you guys. Time for let's get into it. going through this pretty quickly. All right, you guys. I know we refrained for a while from talking about this couple, group, thruple. I don't even know who the fuck they are anymore, what they are anymore. Let's go ahead and put her up on the screen in this Let's Get Into It topic, starting off with Chris Sean Rock, everybody. Just gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous girl. I just hate that she's with so many shenanigans. Um, so we're going to break it down. And we're going to get into it. It's pretty much three topics combined in one, but combining the same people. So Krishan Rock, all right? Krishan Rock speaks out on getting her sister jumped. You tried to backdoor me. I just beat you to it, she said in a video she posted. She said her sister was looking at her chains and money and was trying to distract her. Y'all some ghetto ass bitches. Uh, what, 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 whatever happened to, um, you did me wrong or you're trying to do me wrong. So I just ain't gonna fuck with you no more. Like really, Krishan, you got your own sister jump and you said she tried to backdoor you. I'm curious to really understand what was going on because we know that you get paranoid about a lot of shit. So apparently because she was looking at your chains and you feel like she was trying to distract you, 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 you got her jump. Uh, unnecessary, uncalled for, kick the bitch out, kick the bitch out. And here's the thing. Krishan's sister, if in fact you were, okay, looking at her chains and you were trying to backdoor her, bitch, you a dumb bitch. You know how to fuck your sister rock. You know how Krishan rock rocks, bitch. She get teeth knocked out and keep motherfucking going like the Energizer motherfucking uh, bunny. She done fought goddamn her boyfriend's mama, her boyfriend's sister. People laid out on the concrete and she just going and going and going. She done jumped on people, on baddies. You know Krishan don't motherfucking play. And due to the fact that she's pregnant, you know she was going to get somebody on your ass. If you were sitting there and trying to be a criminal, you was a dumbass criminal. Now, I get you, Krishan. I don't play about my money either. I don't play about it. I ain't got no chains, but I don't play about my motherfucking money. I get it. But come on. You're about to have a baby. Getting somebody jumped. And then you're sitting there on social media and 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 admitting uh, about getting somebody jumped, about getting your own sister jumped. Bitch, do you want to have this baby for motherfucking inside jail? You just admitted to a motherfucking crime. You put a hit out on your motherfucking sister. You didn't get her alive, but you still put a hit out on her. Anything could have motherfucking happened because you got her jumped, bitch. Now, Krishan, I told you when I met you, I felt like you had a pure spirit. I really liked you, but you guys know I cannot be biased. I got to call a spade a spade, and I have to say what it is when the fuck it is. Bitch, get your shit together. You about to be a mama. Your stomach is protruding out as big as a motherfucking goddamn watermelon in there. If you don't realize it every time you wake up and you look down and see that stomach protruding like that, that you about to be a mama and get your motherfucking act together, bitch, I don't know what the fuck to tell you. Fucked up in my opinion. Y'all a ghetto ass family. Just ghetto. Now let's go into the second part uh, of this. Let's get into a topic. Blueface. Everybody knows who Blueface is. Is Krishan's ex or is he? I don't know. We're about to get into it. But Blueface, we know damn well, is her baby daddy. We saw the DNA test with that. Now, Blueface gets frustrated with Jaden Alexis in the studio after she can't say a line in her song. What don't you know? That's what Blueface said to Jaden Alexis. Now, those of you guys that don't know, Jaden Alexis. Oh, babe, let's put that picture up on the screen. Blueface and Jaden Alexis. This is Blueface right here. This is his baby mama, Jaden Alexis. Okay. Now, for those of you guys that uh, don't know, and you should because it's been all over the internet. I mean, Blueface was with Jaden. Uh, he cheated on Jaden with Krishan, got with Krishan, been dogging Krishan out, got back with Jaden, left Jaden, got back with Krishan. It has just been, been a motherfucking tennis match between bouncing back and forth between couples, okay? Now, when I heard him 
in the studio going off on Jaden and, 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 and yelling at her like that. Uh, all that I heard was nut butch. Oh, nut butch. Bitch, you sounded like motherfucking Ike. What the fuck do you expect, blue face? You know your goddamn baby mama ain't got no goddamn talent. As she said, she got a big head. That's about all she motherfucking got. And a goddamn botch, goddamn SpongeBob Square pants looking ass body. How your body gonna be SpongeBob and your face gonna be stool? Okay? You knew the bitch ain't got no motherfucking talent. What the fuck do you expect, Blue Face? You don't even got motherfucking talent. You can't even rap on beat. So if you ain't got no talent and you trying to coach her, it's no talent trying to coach no talent. You have no reason to get upset. Go back and work on your motherfucking beats. And Jaden. You got to be the dumbest bitch. Because let me tell you something. Ain't no nigga, okay, that I'm motherfucking making money for going to sit there and talk to me like that. He is not sitting there and using any of uh, whatever talent he may have that's in the amount of his goddamn uh, little pinky. He's not using any of, uh, uh, of, of his resources. He is using y'all's bitches to keep his name motherfucking relevant and to goddamn pay, uh, give, give him a payout and for him to earn money or make money. Or take money, however you want to say it. Now, moving into the third phase of this Let's Get Into It segment. If you guys have been following, you also know that Blueface has been in a feud with Krishan. He just recently did videos having Krishan's blue wig on, acting like Krishan. He's talked so much shit. So much disrespectful shit has continued to disrespect her. And it, I mean, the list goes on and on and on and on. It is like this nigga is obsessed with Krishan. And Jaden, if I was you, I'd feel some kind of way that nigga, you with me and we at the house and you keep talking about this bitch. Well, everybody. Blue face and motherfucking Krishan Rock showed up to Jason Lee's party together. Put the picture up on the screen, babe. Put it up on the screen. Oh, yeah. There you go. Now, I did a little circle and a little arrow so that you guys can see what's going on. And that top right-hand corner, that's blue face right there with the hoodie on. That is Krishan with her curly hair out, with her stomach protruding, okay? And you can see that his arm, yes, is around her. She was even dancing on him. They were very close and very comfortable. Now, at this point in time, I think that we are getting uh, duped, and all these motherfuckers is in cahoots together. And I mean everybody. I mean Krishan, uh, Jaden Alexis, blue face, his mama, Carl. Alyssa, everybody. Because how do you hate your mama, don't communicate with your mama, don't like your mama, and now all of a sudden you got a show with your mama? Okay? I think they created that drama because they knew that it was going to get them a show. I think motherfucking goddamn Krishan and uh, Jaden Alexis and Blueface allegedly sat down together and said, bitches, how the fuck are we going to make money? All right, that's what we going to do, okay? I'm going to act like I'm going to disrespect you guys. And Now, I don't think he acting with that. I think he really is being disrespectful. But I think that at this point in time, because he's bouncing back from one person to another, and I, you can't tell me the two bitches is that motherfucking dumb. And I think they, fi they figured, okay, let's go ahead and just make money together. Because now Jaden, Krishan, and Blueface, and Carlissa, they all getting motherfucking money. I think we've been duped, ladies and gentlemen. I really do. And one day somebody gonna come out and be like, y'all, it was something, it was a storyline and we planned that all motherfucking along. Krishan, you're stupid. Jaden, you're stupid. Okay? Ain't that much dumbness in the motherfucking world. Okay? Jaden, you got a big ass head. Like you said, it should be some type of sense in there. Y'all don't see how this nigga, and here's the thing. You can't say, Krishan, that y'all showed up because it was an obligation and you guys were, were promoting something that you guys were doing together. This was Jason Lee's birthday party and y'all showed up together. Ain't no way. Ain't no way a nigga gonna sit there and talk about taking the baby from you and the type of mom you are and this, is that, and the other, and you still gonna show up with him. And I, I, wonder, I wonder what Jaden was doing. Now, see, this party was just Saturday, so I'm I'm wondering how Jaden is feeling about this. Jaden, you let this talent mother, uh, talentless motherfucker come back into your life or back into your house because he's going to be in your life. Y'all got children together. He's stupid. Stay tuned because I'm going to keep you, I'll keep you guys informed. I'm so tired of talking about them. All right, you guys, time to go to the next segment. It's time to address the mess. I don't want 
went through. It's pretty fast, baby. How long do you think I've been on screen? That's even what we got to cut? No. Oh, okay. Well, period. All right. I'm doing the damn thing. All right, you guys. Let's go. <laughs> let's put it up on the screen. Address the mess, everybody. Nene Leaks. Nene Leaks. All right. Now, for those of you that don't know, okay, Nene Leaks is a former cast member of Real Housewives of Atlanta. Okay. She is also uh, from the town. Okay. That um, I'm not going to say I'm from because my dad's tired there. But anyway, that I've spent a lot of town and that she denied. Okay. Um, just a little fun fact right there. But let's go ahead and talk about what Nene's uh, in the news for. Uh, in true Nene Leakes fashion, the reality star is setting the record straight. The former Real Housewives of Atlanta star is responding to a report that claims she is being sued for unpaid rent for her old clothing store swag. On, on, on Wednesday, she was reported that her former landlord at Sugarloaf Mills, the shopping center where her woman's clothing store was located, is taking the legal steps so she can pay off the balance of $22,900 owed under the lease. Nene stated, Greg signed the lease, not me. He ain't here. Now, those of you guys that don't know, um, Nene Leak's uh, husband passed away um, in 2021. Okay. Um, and apparently he paid the lease and he's not here. Well, I got to tell you, Nene. Um, and, you know, I had the, uh, the uh, experience of going with Jason, meeting up with Jason Lee in Atlanta. And we went to uh, Nene's, uh, Nene Leak's hookah spot that she has. She has a hookah lounge in Atlanta. And we went there and I, we were, uh, I was in the section with Nene and we were smoking, we were smoking hookah and I saw her with her, her then man and, and her baby and her doing all her little dancing and, and moving. And also a little fun fact, because that bitch also tried to eye me up and down like, who is this bitch? Uh-uh, Nene, don't do me. <laughs> we come from the same area. You know how the fuck we get down. Don't do me. Now I got to tell you, okay, while I do like Nene, Okay. Um, uh, you guys know I got to call out the uh, the stupidness when I see it. Uh, Nene, you wrong for this. This is tacky. It is so tacky. And for somebody that is so uh, uh, above and, and, and so bougie, this is really, really tacky. Okay. Somebody that, as you claim, built the houses. Okay. Built the house of the Real Housewives of Atlanta, you know what I'm saying? And then y'all know Kenya slammed her and told her that her house got foreclosed on. Now, when they, they, when they saying that, they're talking about her position and how she started uh, Real Housewives of Atlanta. Uh, she uh, started uh, the house of Real Housewives of, Housewives of Atlanta. And Kenya, it's just a side note, you guys, a little bit of tea. And Kenya then sat there and said her life, her her um, her house was foreclosed on because she didn't pay the bills. Now they're not talking about an actual house, but they're talking about you know uh, metaphorically. Okay, did I say that right? You guys know what I'm talking about. Okay, now somebody that started okay this real house that's a real housewives of Atlanta franchise, whatever you want to call it, built the house, built the foundation, whatever you want to call it, Nini, that has so much class. And I do agree with you. You did do that because uh, uh, Kenya really cannot talk because she's boring as fuck. Okay. Um, I don't think anybody's really been interested in Kenya since motherfucking Walter. Uh, I think everybody was understand trying to figure out why she was uh, chasing a half bald uh, tow uh, truck man around. Okay. But anyway, that's just a little side note. It's wrong, Nene. It was your store. It was still your store. Greg may have, and y'all are in marriage together, and he may have signed the lease, Nene, but you know that your husband has passed away. How are you going to sit there and take food out of somebody's mouth and money out of somebody's mouth when that was the space that was used for you to make money in your store? Okay? Now, that is one thing I do have to say about Nene, that um, even though I like Nene, I do think that sometimes she acts like she is above the law. She acts like she is above having to do what is morally right and everybody else should follow that code, but she doesn't. Okay? Now, I don't know why you don't got swag no more. Perhaps maybe it's the name or something like that because bitch, don't nobody say swag no more. Okay? Uh, but I will say, Nene, you need to pay them motherfuckers your money. You sit there and and and, and sit there and say that you are a rich bitch and and, and your kids are grown. I mean, uh, it seems like you're living your best life. Twenty two thousand, twenty three thousand shouldn't be nothing. That shouldn't be nothing for you. 
But I think that this is wrong. It's morally wrong. You are literally taking the food uh, out of somebody else's mouth. Okay, a lot of it at that. Because you're saying that it was Greg's, Greg's lease and Greg signed it. Well, Greg is not here anymore. Unfortunately, may he rest in peace. You are his wife. Okay? You are his widow. It is your responsibility to handle what needs to be handled. In this situation anyway, I'm not saying all affairs and all debts that Greg owes, but I am saying in this situation because, Nene, it was your motherfucking store. Okay? It was your store. It was your store that made you money. Therefore, Nene, okay, get up off your tall ass and go pay the motherfuckers your money. Their money. With your money. I think it's just ridiculous that it's even came to that. And I think that it's really disgusting that you would say something like, you know, Greg signed the lease, but Greg ain't here. I think that's fucked up. And really, I think it's fucked up too because you're kind of throwing Greg underneath the bus and he's not here to defend himself. I don't know how long ago Swag closed. I don't know if this is something that recently closed down. I haven't heard from Swag in a long time. And to tell you the truth, honey, even when you said it was doing good, I ain't really hear about Swag then. Okay? It wasn't one of them stores. Hence the reason that it's, it's shut down. Allegedly. But I will say that I think that that's kind of throwing uh, Greg under the bus because we don't know if that this was a bill that wasn't being paid when he was alive or if this is a bill that accumulated after the fact, after he passed away. I think that it's not honoring your husband. I think it's really tacky, 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 tacky. Okay? This is not a Kim Zolciak situation. Where you're when when you're on the show and you're having to really sit there and go in on somebody, okay? This makes you look really really bad, Nene. If you ain't pulling in enough dollars from that goddamn hookah lounge, then bitch, you need to let somebody know. You need to go to Andy Cohen and ask if you can get your motherfucking job back, bitch. Because you need to be able to pay your bills. Can you pay your bills? Pay your bills. We did it, guys. We made it through our first show back, okay? It may have been a little bit rusty, but we did it. I want to thank you guys and thank everybody for all the support. I have been getting so much support from you guys. Um, the the subscribers continue uh, to uh, keep coming in. I want to just tell everybody right now, make sure that you like this video. Make sure that you uh, subscribe, okay? And make sure that you click that notification bell down below so that you can be notified every time one of my videos come up. And remember, every Monday night, 8 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time, unless something comes up. But if something comes up, if you click the notification bell, then you'll be notified. But Unless something, if, if nothing comes up, then every Monday, 8 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Make sure you guys also go over to Instagram right now and fo follow me at Royal Queen Sharon, okay? I want to thank you guys so much for tuning into the episode today. Remember, I am Queen Sharon, Queen of the Mess Report, where I cover the mess so you don't have to stress. And thank you guys for tuning into another episode of Hot Off the Press. I will see you guys next week. Love you. Miss you. Deuces.